Hello friends! Long time no see. Um, as you guys probably know by now, I took a break from filming. Um, I kind of addressed everything in my last video as to why I'm filming a separate intro for it because I filmed it, it I was like pre-filming so I was filming it before a lot of things went on so um, I'm still going to link some resources in this video as well if you're still looking to support the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, you should be. But yeah, so I'll still link some resources down below, but there will be lots more in my last video that I uploaded as well um, in the down bar. So with that, I'm kind of just going to hop straight in. I might be a little awkward because I haven't filmed in like a couple weeks now. Um, I decided to kind of just take all the time off to use the smaller platform that I have at least for something a little more productive. So um, if you do follow me on Instagram, I'm also sharing lots of resources, information, and all that fun stuff on there as well. Um, but yeah, let's just get into it. So this is going to be my box charm unboxing. And, um, I'm not, like, mad. Like, it's, like, a good dollar value and all, but I just don't love absolutely everything that's in it. And as a Canadian, I'm upset because I had to pay duties. And I've never had to pay duties for a box before from BoxyCharm. Um, so that's new, and I don't like it. <laughs> Because I had to pay almost $20 <laughs> to get this, and like it's the box deluxe as well, so it's also already a little bit more expensive. Conversion and all that fun stuff, so it makes it a little bit pricier than what I'm willing to pay. So, if that continues to be an issue, um, I might consider unsubscribing. I did email their customer service, and I'll kind of just like see if they have anything to say about it. Maybe they'll give me, do maybe they'll give me money. Who knows? I don't know, but. With that, we're going to get straight into it. I'm actually going to fix the angle of my camera really quickly because I don't like it. That was the most minuscule difference, but I can tell, so it's fine. <laughs> so I'm going to get the skincare items out of the way. I did get the um, Kylie Skin Foaming Facial Cleanser. This is just the box. Um, so I've used this twice. I wanted to use the skincare items before I filmed just so I could actually, like, have some sort of opinion and thoughts just not only, like, on the ingredient list. This is 24 US dollars, so probably around 30-ish Canadian. Um, it says that this luxurious foaming face wash is infused with ultra-nourishing kiwi seed oil, vitamin C and E to help maintain moisture and improve elasticity, and the gentle formula cleanses the skin by helping remove dirt oil and make up for a fresh, bright complexion. Um, I personally wouldn't recommend using a foaming cleanser to be your first cleanse if you're using it to remove makeup. An oil cleanser would be much more efficient. If you use a foaming cleanser as your second cleanse, that's super cool. Um, this did make my face feel a little bit dry, but I'm not huge on more, like, foaming cleansers because I'm more of a normal kind of skin type. Um, so while this isn't my preferred texture, and I'll be passing this along to somebody who would enjoy it more than me, um, texture-wise, it wasn't bad. If you have a little more of an oilier skin, I think you'd enjoy it a lot more. Um, just looking at the ingredient list, though, I did notice that the kiwi seed oil that it brags about having is actually below the fragrance line, so there's really not a lot of it in here. Um, same with the hyaluronic acid as well. It's in here, but it's the second last ingredient, so it's not going to actually do all that much for you. But in terms of cleansers actually having really potent, like, skincare benefits, you're leaving it on your face for, like, a minute. Um, so in terms of, like, the vitamin C or anything like that, it's not, it doesn't have time to work. It's not going to do too much. So, like, overall, it's all right. I personally wouldn't purchase it, but I don't think it's bad. I also got the Pure Heels Propolis 80 Sleeping Mask, which I think is bee stuff. Yeah. Sleeping Mask enriched with 80% Honeybee Propolis Extract. <sighs> Sounds fancy. If I look on here, that bad boy is $55 American, so probably like 70-ish at least Canadian. Um, and it just says that it's an enriched sleeping mask providing full nourishment and glowing skin to tired skin while sleeping. The propolis extract forms a water oil protective barrier that soothes irritated sensitive skin. So this I've also used twice. It does come with a little scoop, but I left that in my room by accident. But it's like, this is like huge. This is a lot. This is 100 mils. Like this is, this is more than three foundations. Math. But um, I used it two nights in a row. I think it's nice. It's definitely more like a lightweight texture. Um, it's not like thick or heavy or greasy or anything like that. It does provide some really nice lightweight moisture. Um, I remember reading the ingredient list and being chill with it. Yeah, there's a lot of different oils in here. You have aloe, lots of extracts. There are some essential oils towards the bottom, but depending on your opinion on that, you may or may not care. 
Um, I'm not like up in arms about essential oils, but I know that they're not great for everybody's skin. There's also Alentoine in here, which would be super soothing. So yeah, overall, I think this is really, really nice. It is a little bit expensive, probably not something that I would have sought out on my own, but I totally see myself like finishing this off. I think it worked really, really well for my skin. My skin felt really nice and hydrated in the morning without feeling like greasy or heavy or bleh, you know? So with that, those are the skincare items that I got. Um, I also got these Smile Sciences teeth whitening pens. These little guys here. So these are the kind that you can paint on your teeth without having to use like the light. Um, Cause I have that kind as well, but like I just, I don't like all the drool pulling in my mouth and just, you know? So I'm excited to use these. I'll keep you guys updated. Um, like, I definitely don't have the whitest teeth. I could totally use some teeth whitening. I'm very aware. So, I'll definitely see how these go. I see myself using these more because you just paint them on and then 30 minutes later you rinse it off. It's not like a huge ordeal. So, I am excited about this. In terms of cost... $80. Oh my god. This duo pen pack will last you all month. What does that mean? Am I supposed to use this every day? I'm terrified. How, how much do I use this? It doesn't say. Yeah, like, you know how most teeth whitening things will be like, you, seven days in a row, da 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 I feel like if you did this for a month straight, you'd, like, sensitize the crap out of your teeth. Um, however, I am no expert. Although, considering it's $80 US, it's, like, over $100 Canadian, easy. So, um, ho ho. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely keep you guys updated on this, but I... Even if I love them, I honestly probably won't buy it again just because that's expensive and I'm a bitch. So, there you have it. Getting into things that I can actually put on my face right now, I got the Touch and Soul Nor po no, <laughs> no Problem Prime Essence with Calendula, which I know is soothing for the skin, which is just delightful. Really similar packaging to last month's primer that I got. Um, ooh, where's the English? Oh, down at the bottom here. A primer essence infused with calendula flower extract. Sounds nice. Apparently this will also tighten your pores. $23 US, so probably like just under $30 Canadian. This prime essence is for anyone looking to take their makeup to routine to the next level. This formula is enhanced with calendula flower extract to minimize pores and smooth skin texture. Use it on its own or pair it with the Nor po No Problem Primer. Wait. Don't tell me this is a primer for my primer. I will scream. Um, I'm gonna put it just on half of my face. Oh, it's really thin. Ooh, Yeah, it just feels like I'm putting water on my face. I'm just gonna put it on one side to see if it has any visible effect underneath my makeup. But Prime Essence and then pair it with the No Pore Blum Primer. So it's almost like this is like a skincare and primer kind of thing, but also it's priming you for your primer and I'm just really puzzled on how many primers um, the makeup industry thinks I want to buy. <laughs> like, thank you capitalism, but I don't need to prime for my primer. Um, but I'll see how this goes, because I actually, like, Calendula is just nice for the skin. It is soothing as well. So if it feels nice, I'll probably use it. Like, I'll use it up. But I feel like a primer for your primer is, like, a gimmick and a half. I don't know. My face feels really tacky where I put it. Like, You know, so definitely feels kind of hydrating. Although if you have pore issues, you're likely to be a bit more oily. I don't see this being oil absorbing. Let me just triple check the ingredients here. Well, the calendula on the ingredient list comes after the preservative. <laughs> so again, it's, it's not like chock full, um, but it comes before the fragrance, which is at least nice. It doesn't smell like that much. It doesn't have a strong scent, but it's like, a perfumey scent, if that makes sense. So we'll see how this goes. I have my Smashbox Studio Skin Foundation with me right now just because I have some fake tan on, but I did get a brush set in here, but there's no foundation brush. So I'm gonna do my foundation just like with my regular stuff. And then I'll kind of kind of jump in and out to show you guys the new brushes. Forgot to bring a mirror with me. So let me just use this little compact. I'm gonna do the one side of my face that I put the primer on on camera with you guys, and then I'm gonna do my concealer and powder and all that stuff off camera just for time's sake. Everything's going on fine and like blending fine. Um, 
I do have some texture on my chin. It's not enhancing it at all, but it also hasn't smoothed it out. However, I can't really expect it to do too much smoothing because it's not porous texture. It's like I have like little bumps on my skin. But everything's sitting just fine. I don't see like any collecting around my nose or anything like that. So I'm going to finish off the rest of like my base and then I'll come back. Okay, my base is on. We are back. So I got the Billion Dollar Brushes Charcoal Brush Set. So this guy here, it has five brushes. Oh, it's from Billion Dollar Brows, but it's the Billion Dollar Brushes. What? The packaging says Billion Dollar Brushes, <laughs> and the sheet says Billion Dollar Brows, but the, the name Billion Dollar Brows, like, rings some bells. So these vegan cruelty-free synthetic brushes are charcoal infused for an antimicrobial effect, allowing for flawless makeup and eyeshadow application. Okay. All right. Um, and it's $55 US, so again, probably close to like 70-ish Canadian. So we'll see how these guys go. Um, there's a powder brush in here, but I don't powder my whole face, so I'm going to use that um, to bronze and to do blush. A contour brush, concealer, eyeshadow, and highlighter. The Very small. I'm going to use it for eyeshadow, though, also, because I brought some eyeshadows in just to kind of throw something on really quick. So, we're going to start with the powder brush, which I'm actually just going to use for my bronzer. So, oh... Some of the bristles on the top are kind of like whoop, curved sideways a little bit. I'm assuming it's from being in the box. So I'm just going to tap in here. I don't know how much this is going to pick up. It feels really soft, but also like really flimsy. Um, like there's not a lot to it, you know? Like super, super flimsy, which I don't think is bad for like bronzer. If you're just trying to get more of a general application feels nice and soft. It's definitely just like a traditional synthetic. Um, given the price, again, I don't think I'd pay that much for this. It's not bad. It's just they do feel a little bit cheap. And my bronzer's going on like really patchy. I don't know if you guys can tell. I'm going to try to fix it up maybe with the contour brush after, but I'm going to finish doing the other side with this just to keep it even. But yeah, it's going on kind of patchy, which I'm not a fan of. I don't think anybody would be a fan, to be honest. Yeah, I'm gonna grab the contour brush just because it's a little bit more dense. This also, yeah, it feels like it has more to it, but there's also actually, this isn't very well made. I don't know if you guys will be able to tell, but I'm gonna hold it up as close as I can. I'm gonna move my light so you guys can maybe see it a little better. Can you guys see this little step down? It goes like do, 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 like that. I think you guys can see. Yeah, that's just not very well made, um, because that could, let me just fix my light again. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this will also give us issues with application, but we're already here, so I'm just going to do it. So I'm picking up a little bit more. Yeah, this feels like it's not touching the skin all that nicely. I'm just going to use the fluffier end of it to blend that out a little bit. You can, I can feel how it's not quite hitting my face right. So this one I actually just don't see myself ever using ever again. Because I'm not going to use a brush that's like literally made incorrectly. <laughs> it's just like a big no thanks for me. Okay, I was going to use that one maybe for blush too. But now that I know that it's got like that weird wonkiness to it, um, I'm going to cancel that. <laughs> I'm going to use the powder brush for my blush. Um, I've just got the MAC Just a Pinch and Extra Dimension blush. The bronzer I used was discontinued at Sun Soak Strip from the uh, summer collection last year. My apologies, but I just had to. It's one of my faves. Yeah. It's, this thing is though, it's this one also because it's so loose, it's not picking up a whole ton of blush. Again, I'm not a huge blush guy, so I'm not like the most offended, but I really am like jamming my brush in there to pick some up. I just wonder if it's going patchy because of that weirdness of the bristles that I mentioned. You guys definitely won't be able to tell on camera, but the bristles at the top, they're not going like this, they're going like this. So I feel like they're just picking up on things a little bit funny. 
okay. But I mean, that it's not awful. Um, I'm gonna put on my highlight really quick and I will come back after my lids are primed for us to do eyeshadow. I was actually just thinking while I was priming my lid, I might as well use the concealer brush that came in here to do it. So I just have some of my P. Louise and Mama Mitchell uh, blank canvas on here. Now there is one wonky hair on this guy. There's like one hair that's just insanely long. But after I trim that hair, it should be fine. This does do like pretty well, it feels, for primer. Because I do like brushes that have more of that like angle to it. Yeah, kind of sounds like a little rounded there. I like that for going up to the brow and all that fun stuff. So I could see myself using this one again. So, so far, I've got one brush that I actually like. I do have to trim that one hair though, or else that's gonna cause problems. So, I also do have some of my own like regular brushes that I brought in here as well because I don't intend to do a full eye look with just these two because this one does feel a little bit dense. So I'm going to be using my Natasha Denona Sunrise Palette for today. I haven't touched it in a little while so I figure I may as well dig it out. And I'm going to use a Morphe M504. I'm going to go into the shade Morgan which is like a, a light peach. I'm going to make sure that there's no creasy boys here. And I'm just gonna kind of pop this just to give like a little bit of dimension here first as our transition. I don't really know where I'm going with this yet, but I just wanted to use the palette and I wanted to do something that's fairly simple. This won't be like a 30 eyeshadow look, I don't think, unless I change my mind. <laughs> so that is all blended on there. So. I'm going to take this highlight brush, which is like really small, I'm going to just use it as like a small crease brush, and I'm going to go into Glory, which is like a berry shade. Well, that actually picked up, it picked up quite a bit of color. I'm going to go right on my outer corner here. It's depositing really nicely. That's not bad. I am going to grab a little bit more. I do want it to be like a little bit more rich. And when I'm blending, I'm just making sure to use a light hand because I don't want this to like pick up the eyeshadow that's underneath. But that did blend like really easily. I'm going to take a little bit more of Morgan and just go back just to re-intensify the peach color. But like overall not bad. It did go a little bit lower than what I wanted, but that's like an easy fix. Okay. And then I'm going to take the little eyeshadow brush and I'm going to go into the shade, let's do Azalea, and pop that on my lid. This feels like a little bit like thick, the eyeshadow brush. Um, it's kind of like chunky. It picked up like okay. I think I'd ra like it better applied with my finger but not bad. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use my finger. Yeah, and then I'm actually gonna take the shade, hmm, I'm gonna take Poppy. i do that on my finger as well, just to kind of transition in between those two. I'm literally just wiggling it, just to give them a little blend between. It's like super easy to do. I did get a good amount of fallout there, holy moly. Most of it went away. Yeah. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of final tweaking here. A little bit more of our berry shade. So I just wiped off the eyeshadow brush and I'm gonna use the shade Agate for my inner corner. That shade picked up a lot nicer than the other one did. Now, for my lower lash line, I think I'll actually like this brush quite a bit for my lower lash line. So I'm going to wipe it off again. I'm going to go into Morgan. Yeah, I like the size of this for underneath my eye. And then a little bit of glory. Yeah, 
super easy just to like frame the eye. I'm gonna do my other eye off camera. And then I have, don't I have? I do have mascara for us to try. Okay, my other eye is done. Um, I did have quite a bit of fallout, which I'm not the biggest fan of. Um, so I've used a pump before and the mattes don't normally fall over my face, but this time they did, so like not my fave. But I like I like the look, pretty simple, pretty easy. Now for the mascara, I have the Lily Lashes Triple X Mascara, an extra lengthening, extra volumizing, extra bold mascara with a tapered dual fiber wand that defines and coats each and every lash with an ultra black velvety smooth formula. $24 US, so probably again like 30-ish Canadian. I did already curl my lashes, so I'm just gonna whip this bad boy out and we'll see how it goes. Because, oh, it's like a thick, thick, chonky brush here. Now, I'm normally someone that wears waterproof mascara because my lashes are very straight. So, I will be kind of bummed if my lashes fall, but they probably will. Right off the bat, it is coating every lash really nice. I do like fluffier wands like this, but I'd say I'm getting a lot of like length and a lot of definition, but actually not that much volume because I do naturally have a lot of lashes. So considering like how my lashes look with my regular mascara, I wouldn't say this is like particularly different. I'm gonna do the bottoms as well because I want to see if this will transfer because that's a huge issue that I have with mascaras. They tend to transfer right here when I blink because my lashes are long enough that they touch down here. My lashes are already falling. Mm. Uh, <laughs> That's a bummer, but I'll get you guys nice and close. Let's see here. Whoop! So, from one eye to the other, I'll look up. Oh, look right into the light. <laughs> so you guys can see, like, there is a good amount of, like, length and everything, but Nothing crazy. I wouldn't call it like a triple X scenario, but you know. But again, like my lashes are already straightening out, which sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna do my other eye off camera, but I gotta say like maybe if I layered this over top of a waterproof mascara, I might like it a little bit better. But as of right now, just cause it's not holding the curl, it's not something that I'm ever gonna use again, unless I can somehow make it work for me. But the overall effect isn't bad, so if your lashes naturally do hold a curl much better, or you have naturally curly lashes, you may like it. I think it's just not for the poor, unfortunate, straight lash people such as myself. <sighs> we have made it to the final product. The Bodyography Lip Pencil 2 Pack. So this guy here, antioxidant lip pencils that glide on like your favorite lipstick with precise pigment reach, color to frame, fill in and define lips, enriched with coconut oil and vitamin E, $28, so probably $35-ish Canadian. So I get two colors in here, which is fun. Let me... Ooh, I brought in like a nude lipstick and like a more colored lipstick. Oh, the cap fell off of one. Don't love that. Okay. Oh, the cap is like, eh, 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 eh. I can't put this in my purse because it'll fall off. The other one's kind of loose, not as bad, but again, like I wouldn't put it in my purse. So I have one shade here called Pouty, which is like a nice mauvey pink. And then I have Rosewood, which is a little bit deeper. Rosewood is the one with the bum lid. So, pouty and rosewood there. Oh, what do I want to do? Um, I think I'm going to start with pouty, and we'll kind of go from there. So let's see how these glide. I don't know about you, but I'm seeing a lot of tugging. I'm not seeing a lot of gliding. Hello? <laughs> I don't know if I'd call that particularly glidey. And I'm only being a troll here because, like, I do have lip pencils that, like, genuinely, like, shush, glide on the way this is described. Like, these feel more like a MAC lip pencil. So I'm not mad at the texture. I don't think it's a bad texture, but I don't think it's the texture that's advertised. So I am filling in a little with it, too. But, yeah, this just doesn't feel 
that nice, you know? They just don't feel as hydrating as like it made it sound like it would feel. I think I'm going to take a little bit of rosewood too just so I can use both colors. And I'm just going to blend that with my finger. Yeah, just to get a little extra definition. Oh, look at how dry my lips are. Oh my gosh. I'm just tapping on a little bit of Princess Incognito from MAC. Um, it's essentially the same as Down to an Art. This one's from the Aladdin collection, but Down to an Art looks almost the exact same. Can verify because I worked there. <laughs> and I'm going to take a little bit of the Hindash lipstick and throw that on top. Just for a little moisture here. There we are. That's a nice little combo. Yeah, so, like, again, I'm not mad at the lip liners. Texture-wise, really, really similar to a MAC lip pencil. Um, so it is more of a drier consistency, but you do get a lot of nice precision with that, and you'll have to worry about them feathering throughout the day. It's just that I don't think that the texture lines up with how they're advertised, and that's what I find a little bit irritating. Um, because it says that they're, like, super rich and glidy and creamy and mwah. And, um, and the experience I just had, they were not. And I did fill in my whole lip line with it. Like, I did try to give it a chance to warm up or some magical thing like that. And it just kind of didn't happen. So, with that, that is the whole box. That is everything that was in there. Um, so, some hits and some misses. Oh, wait a sec. Wait. <gasps> guys! Guys! No! I didn't read over my sheet first. This was tucked in hiding at the bottom. No! Oh my god. What an idiot. Okay. I already own this. I'm going to open it so you guys can see, but I actually I already have this. Um, I got it as gratis when it first launched, so I've had it for a long time. I will open it to show you guys the... Ooh, I see some eyeshadow dust. I'm growing concerned. So this is the palette that came in here that I did not know was in here. I'm so sorry. That would be this guy here. So I like this palette. Like when I worked at Sephora, I used it regularly on clients. Um, you do get a lot of mattes in here. So if you're a matte fan, that's great. But I like how the palette is arranged in a sense of it kind of helps inspire you. Look at the mask on my desk in front of me in the mirror. It kind of just helps inspire you to come up with a look. So you have like warm neutrals, cool neutrals, some berries, and then your more like actual like true neutrals at the bottom here. Oh, there's like a little mark on one of the eyeshadows. Anyway, and then you have your shimmers along the bot the side here. The shimmers, these metallics are really really nice. They're very very creamy, very wet. But I've never really had that much of an issue with Tarte Shadows. They can be a little bit dusty, um, but they're not bad by any means. But what I think I will do is I am going to film a tutorial with the one that is already open and has been used. And I will upload that next. Just so I can, like, make it up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's, like, super late and I haven't filmed in ages. And I just, I didn't know what was in there. How did I, you know, like, I just... Let's see, $49, yeah, I think this one, I think this is 55 Canadian, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. I cannot believe I am that brand of idiot. Actually, no, you know what? I can believe. I can believe that I'm that brand of idiot. Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> with that, oh my god, I can't believe I'm going to upload this still, but... It is what it is. That's the unboxing. That was all my first impressions, and I can't I can't refilm that. So this is just how it is. So um, if you like when people royally fuck up, feel free to subscribe. <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen again. But overall, I feel like the, the value of the box is like pretty sick. Um, one thing I think that's kind of dumb. Where did it go? I already yeeted it. So I got a you got a coupon for five dollars off your next Kylie skin order. Five dollars? Kylie? 
you are on the Forbes list of billionaires, give us a real discount, is what I'm saying. So, yeah, overall, like, the value of this box is pretty high. The only things that I'm not really vibing with was the mascara, just because my lashes are kind of already going straight. The foaming face wash is nice, just not for moi, not for me. Um, and some of the brushes were misses, but some of them I'm still going to keep using. So that's like a 50-50 split. Overall, not bad. I feel like for Boxy Lux, this has been my least favorite Boxy Lux that I've received. Not a bad one, but definitely not like a fave. Um, but yeah, overall, not too bad. So, I mean, if you're considering subscribing, if you like getting this amount of things, maybe you'll vibe, maybe you won't. But with that, I am going to just head on out because my head is clearly not on my shoulders and I should go to bed is what I should be doing. So again, check the down bar for some Black Lives Matter resources, for other resources. All the info you need will be down there. My social media handles shall be down there. Feel free to like and subscribe, comment down below. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Bye.